In this video, you will learn how to use Geo Accurate Sun and Sky System in Unreal Engine 5. It will enable you to place your sun in a natural and realistic way following the day cycle. Being able to do that will allow you to add a little bit of quality to your work, but also you will stop adding random suns in your scene. Many clients actually care about misrepresenting their projects, and this will help you avoid potential disputes over this issue and save you time down the line. Hi, my name is Leo and in this video I'll walk you through how to add this free plugin to your project, how to set it up, and at the end I will show you how to render out an animation of moving sun. So stay tuned till the end. How does the sun and sky system work? Well, it's very straightforward. When you're working with architectural plans, you will notice that there is always this arrow and an N in the plans. This indicates the north. And this is important because for example, in this case, this room will never get direct sunlight. So how can we keep our lighting in real engine in alignment with this? Well, let me show you on this example of this scene of a downtown square in Lisbon, Portugal. We want our sun to follow the real arc they see every day in the city. The first thing we got to do is to enable sun position calculator under plugins. Type it into the search and enable it, and then restart. It will take a while to compile shaders, but once it's done, click on this little cube with a plus, go to lights and drag out sun and sky into the viewport. So this is a plugin that we need. If you look at what this plugin has, it's exactly the same components as you normally have in your project. So direct light uh, for sunlight, then skylight and sky atmosphere. The only thing special about it is that it automatically updates the sun position and lighting based on the location and date and time that we type in here. To get the location of Lisbon, we call and Google Lisbon latitude and longitude, and we find these numbers. If your project is in London, you type London. If in New York, you type New York. Then we copy paste the numbers into the plugin. So latitude into latitude and longitude into longitude. Here, be careful because Lisbon is nine degrees west and west is negative. So we paste it with a minus. Generally, north is positive, south is negative. East is positive, west is negative. If your project is not in a city and you need to get more specific, you can also just go to Google Maps and type anywhere, like click on anywhere on the map and you see these coordinates here. Now type in the time zone of the country or region and lastly, set your north offset. How do we know where to set our north actually? Well, in RQVs, as I told you before, it's this arrow and the N in the plan. Sometimes though, it might be missing in plans. So let me show you just quickly how you can find it out uh, yourself based on the address. Just for the sake of the lesson, let's say this is the location of our downtown square. Let's align our north, take a screenshot, import it into Unreal, create a simple plane and scale it. Make sure the scale of the plane matches the image resolution, that's important. Rotate the plane according to main objects, like walls in your scene and align the north accordingly. Now we are able to see where the sun is going to be at that location at that specified time. What it allows us to do is to work in a completely different way, because now we are capable of setting up the real life sun. We can stop placing random suns in our scenes and avoid the risk of accidentally pissing off our clients with completely wrong lighting. And even if your client ever questions the realism of your lighting, you just point him to the exact date, time, minute, or if you wish, even second that your lighting was set up for. So we learned how to set up Sun and Sky plugin in our project. Now, how do we animate it? Well, let me show you. First of all, we need to place a camera. You can do it by clicking on this cube with a plus, going to cinematic and dragging out the sign camera actor. Or alternatively, which is a better way, you just fly in the viewport to some place nice, click on this burger and choose create camera here, sign camera actor. If you fly away a little bit, you will see that the camera was created in the exact viewport position, uh, looking at the exact spot that you were looking just a second ago. Now let's right click on it and choose pilot sign camera actor. Now we are inside of it and can see the final image that will come out when we render this camera. We also control the camera when we fly, and this is honestly the most convenient way of setting up our shot in all of the programs I have tried. 
This is perfect for getting your composition right. By the way, if the view wasn't cropped automatically to the camera resolution, just click here to toggle it on and off. Now let's just position it somewhere nice. Let's keep our verticals parallel, set both X and Y angles to zero, and let's set Z to 90 degrees, as I want a pure frontal shot. Okay, that looks good. Now to animate the scene, we will need a sequencer. Press Ctrl space to open content browser, create a folder called sequences, right click in an empty spot, go to cinematics and click level sequence. Let's follow the naming convention and call it LS Sun Sky. Double click on it to open it up and drag and drop your sign camera into the sequencer. Now the sequencer knows what camera to render from. Let's drag and drop Sun Sky too. When you click on the plus next to Sun Sky, you will see a list of things you can set keyframes for. Choose solar time. Solar time is basically the time of the day in decimals. Now go to the first frame by clicking to front. Enter the first hour you want to begin with. Let's go for 8 am. Press here to add a new key, and then go to the last frame by clicking here. Let's finish, let's say at 2 p.m., so 14 in solar time. It created a new key automatically for us. Now let's choose both of those keys, right click and choose linear. This way the movement of the sun will be constant. For this time lapse, I think we will need more frames. To add more frames, click on playback options, and for the end frame, let's choose 600. Now we just need to readjust the camera and solar time in the timeline. We can preview our animation by going to the first frame and clicking play. Looks actually pretty good. How do we render out it now? Well, this button is our render button. When you click here, you will see a window like that. This is movie render queue. If you don't have it, go to plugins, search for it and enable it, then restart. Alternatively, you can use the legacy plugin too. It works, but just has fewer quality options. Once you are in Movie Render Queue, click on Settings, choose your output directory here, and click Accept. Now click on Render Local and wait until the render is complete. Congratulations, you have your movie rendered out. Well, it's in JPEG format. To stitch it together, you will need an editing program. I use DaVinci Resolve, it's a great option and it's free. You just drag and drop your images into Media Pool and then into Timeline, choose Settings, Click Add to Render Queue and click Render. Now you have a video file that you can share with your friends or post on social media. Alright, so now we know how to use real sun to light our scenes. But there is something missing in this render. The cloud. We could use the default volumetric clouds, but they don't look that good. I have spent over a week trying to make this work and this is the result. making a video about how I did it. If you're interested, subscribe so you don't miss it out.